Welcome to Module 6 class. We're coming to you from Lubbock, Texas, and I decided to stay a little closer to home and stop off here at Bigham's Restaurant and Pit Barbecue. Now, you may be thinking, why are we doing another class at a barbecue place? Well, the reason is going to be really clear here. But now, before we start, once again, be sure you read Chapter 6. We're going to cover a lot of material in this module. In fact, this is probably going to be one of the busiest modules we have. We're going to have a lot of material, and next week is the exam, and a lot of this material is going to be on the exam. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance, class. If you haven't already noticed, and I know you have, this audio is kind of messed up. It's not really syncing with the video, and that's because, for whatever reason, when I recorded this, the audio was, was sort of jacked up, and I had to dub over it. So, apologies in advance. But the reason I want to film here at Bigham's uh, restaurant pit barbecue was really to try their barbecue and not because I wanted to try their barbecue per se although it's a pretty well-reviewed restaurant the reason I wanted to try their barbecue was because well I want to try some barbecue sauce Ollie's barbecue sauce Ollie's barbecue sauce is from Alabama and it's actually based on a restaurant in Alabama and we're gonna learn a little bit about this restaurant because a very famous case involved Ollie's Barbecue Sauce. Now Ollie's Barbecue was founded in 1926 in the south side of Birmingham, Alabama. Now Ollie's was a very successful restaurant. It sold over half a million meals a year, but its clientele was almost entirely made up of local Birmingham residents. And its clientele was almost entirely white. Ollie's, as it turns out, prohibited African Americans from dining in their restaurant. Now what's going to be important to our discussion here today is that Ollie's was located on a state highway and only 11 blocks away from an interstate highway. Also, they ordered $70,000 worth of pork and beef from the Hormel Company, which traveled across state lines. Now class, as you may have guessed, Ollie's barbecue ended up in front of the United States Supreme Court and that took place in 1964. But to better understand how it got to that point, it's important to understand the history of the Civil Rights Movement and the history of Birmingham, Alabama in the 1960s. Birmingham was a heavily segregated city with a great deal of racial tension in the 1960s. African Americans were not permitted the same rights as white citizens. An example of this was how African Americans were segregated from places such as theaters and restaurants. Now in 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr came to Birmingham as part of what history now refers to as the Birmingham Campaign. Now the Commissioner of Public Safety in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963 was a man named Bull Connor. Connor would go down in history due to his strong arm tactics in combating the Civil Rights Movement, including Dr. King. In April of 1963, he had Dr. King arrested. While sitting in his jail cell, Dr. King would write letter from Birmingham jail. This document would be one of the most influential and powerful documents as part of the American Civil Rights Movement. The battle for civil rights would continue in Birmingham, Alabama and the United States for much of 1963, but it would take a tragic turn on September 15th of that year when a bomb exploded at the 16th Street Baptist Church, killing four young girls. By 1964, the Civil Rights Movement and Dr. King had the upper hand, and on July 2nd of that year, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Now the Civil Rights Act prohibited discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. One major provision of the Civil Rights Act was Title II, which prohibited discrimination in restaurants. Enter Ali McClung. Ali McClung, owner of Ali's Barbecue, did not want to integrate his restaurant. So Ollie McClung filed suit against the federal government, arguing that they didn't have the authority to make him desegregate his restaurant. Now remember when we talked about judicial review and appellate courts? It's important to note that McClung actually won his initial suit in district court. At this point, the federal government brings out their heavy guns. Deputy Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach, who appeals this decision to the United States Supreme Court. Katzenbach is perhaps best remembered for being part of what history calls the stand in the schoolhouse door. On June 11th of 1963, then Alabama Governor George Wallace stood in the doorway of Foster Auditorium at the University of Alabama and attempted to prevent two African American students from registering. Wallace gave speeches in support of segregation, but Katzenbach ultimately prevailed. 
Here he is watching Vivian Malone walk into the University of Alabama to become the first female African-American student to register at the University of Alabama. In the end, Ali McClung was no match for Nicholas Katzenbach. The Supreme Court ruled unanimously in favor of the federal government and ordered McClung and Ali's Barbecue to start serving African-American patrons. Well, class, the last Ollie's Barbecue restaurant closed in 2001, so we can't go there and try it out, but we can try their barbecue sauce. They still do sell their barbecue sauce online. I went ahead and ordered a, a bottle here off the internet, and we're going to go inside and give it a shot, see how good it is. We do need to understand, though, why is it that Ollie McClung lost his case? You see, he argued that the federal government simply didn't have the authority to go into his business and tell him how to run his business. The federal government countered and said that they did have that authority. You see, they argued under the Commerce Clause, they did have the authority to tell him how to run his business because his business had an impact on interstate commerce. Now, Ali McClung argued that his restaurant should not be considered part of interstate commerce. He noted that he only had local restaurants in the state of Alabama, or he only had his restaurant in the state of Alabama. He did not have any restaurants outside the state of Alabama. He did not advertise outside the state of Alabama, and most of his clientele were local residents from the city. However, the Supreme Court disagreed with him. The Supreme Court found that discrimination in restaurants had a significant burden on the interstate flow of foods and on the movement of products generally. They also found that discrimination in restaurants posed restrictions on African Americans traveling from state to state. Well, class, we are inside Bigham's uh, Pit Barbecue in Lubbock, Texas. I went ahead and ordered a pretty small meal because we got one more stop after this. We're going to Chipotle after this. But I wanted to try the sliced brisket here. It was only $6.95 for a la carte sliced brisket. So far, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's a little dry, but we'll give it a try here. Their barbecue sauce so far looks pretty good. Looks real thick. But again, we're not here to try their barbecue sauce. We're here to try Ollie's world famous best barbecue. Now they still, even after all these years, call themselves the world's best barbecue sauce. Again, the last restaurant closed in 2001. And as we talked about earlier, they were involved in some pretty, pretty serious lit litigation that has rendered them pretty infamous in the legal community because that is one of the premier and one of the landmark cases involved in the Commerce Clause and involved in the Civil Rights Act. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. I went ahead and ordered this bottle off Amazon, and we're going to see just how good Ollie's barbecue sauce is. And it's amazing what you can find on Amazon. I'm going to be honest. This does not look promising. I mean, look at this. It's like watery. I don't know. I don't know about this. Okay, this this is really not looking good at all. Okay, this is embarrassing. This looks like, I kid you not, this looks like barbecue flavored Kool-Aid. All right, maybe it tastes better than it looks, but it smells horrible. I mean, seriously, this is like literally water. I would be embarrassed to put this product out, to be honest. That is the worst barbecue sauce I have ever had in my life. It tastes like ketchup flavored Kool-Aid. If ketchup sucked. Wow, that's bad. It's like racism and high fructose corn syrup. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, that is the worst barbecue sauce I have ever tried in my life. I mean, but just seriously, like, look at this. Barbecue sauce should not be runny. That's like the basic principle of life. There's death taxes and not runny barbecue sauce. I mean, it doesn't have to be like peanut butter thick, but I mean, that is just embarrassing. Let me just compare this to Texas barbecue sauce. I mean, it's night and day here. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this fine bowl of Texas barbecue sauce a taste because mm, that's good barbecue sauce. Admittedly that was a little bit of a setup because you know after you have this barbecue sauce, after you try this Ollie's water sauce or whatever it is, it's, it's night and day, but that is the worst barbecue sauce I ever had. So now not only is Ollie's world famous for uh, 
refusing to serve black patrons and being involved in a landmark civil rights decision, but it's also like the worst barbecue sauce in the world. But I'm gonna go ahead and try the rest of this brisket here without the Ali's barbecue sauce. Yeah, brisket's pretty good. But you can't go wrong with brisket in Texas. You really can't. So, right with their barbecue sauce. It's a little bit of a big piece. It's not bad. It's pretty good. You know, as we're stopping off here, folks, do not be tempted to buy Ali's barbecue sauce. That was horrible. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish this meal, but we got one more stop. We're gonna head over to Chipotle here in Lubbock and we're gonna get a meal there as well. So we're actually eating two meals here today. Uh, the big thing with Chipotle is uh, we're gonna be talking about free speech there and commercial speech. Uh, we got an important subject, uh, subject uh, or important case there that involves uh, commercial speech. I know we talked about Chipotle a couple weeks ago with their class action suit. They're back in the news again, so we're going to be heading there next, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this meal. So far, it's been pretty good, except for that barbecue sauce, but so far, it's been pretty good. We're going to go ahead and uh, head over, finish this and head over to Chipotle. We'll catch you here in a little bit over at Chipotle class. Uh, we've covered so much material here in Module 6. Uh, we've covered everything from the Commerce Clause, which we talked about at our previous stop. Uh, we've covered separation of powers, federalism. We've covered due process in, in Chapter 6. There's a lot of material in this chapter, and one of the things we talked about is free speech and commercial speech. Now class, I've talked about Chipotle earlier and I kind of bashed them a little bit. I'm gonna go in here, I know I've already eaten, but I'm gonna go in here and give them one more shot. Now I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna like it. You know, I've never really been a big Chipotle fan, but I'm gonna give them another shot. But the fact of the matter is Chipotle is back in the news. We talked about Chipotle earlier when we talked about that lawsuit that was filed against them. Now we were talking about that because that was a class action lawsuit. A class as a action lawsuit, as we talked about in the previous module, involves a lot of plaintiffs suing on behalf, or a lot of plaintiffs suing a defendant for alleged uh, alleged harm. In that instance, they were sued back in 2016 for alleging that their food was GMO free. That Chipotle was, they were saying, had misled its customers by saying they had GMO free food. That case was settled, and I talked to you about that uh, in the earlier module. That we are all potentially members of a class. Well. I guess, uh, as, as it turns out, Chipotle is back in the news. Earlier this year in July, a woman named Melissa Cruz in California filed another lawsuit, another class action lawsuit against Chipotle, alleging the same thing, that their advertising was false and misleading because they said that they had GMO-free food and they didn't. Now, we don't know how that one's going to play out yet. It's still early in the game. It was just filed in July, but again, they are, they are back uh, in front of court and they're back in court they're back in federal court over the uh, allegation that they have misled their customers over the claim that they're GMO free so I'm gonna go in there and give them another another shot I, once again I don't know if they're GMO free or not where I guess we'll find out as this lawsuit progresses but it's an important uh, not only when we talk about class action suits as we did with the earlier module it's an important subject because it also talks about commercial speech and free speech and you're going to discover with your assignment this week that that's going to be a very important subject whether or not commercial speech and free speech gives a restaurant like Chipotle the ability to say that they're GMO free if in fact they're not but at the same time is it reasonable for Chipotle to say they're GMO free that we don't really know that's ultimately up to the courts to the decide but as for us and our client, Jack Murphy and Super Mega Mart, he's making some claims about GMO free, or not, excuse me, not GMO free, but he's making some claims about the cereal that Super Mega Mart sells that, well, may be problematic. I need you guys to take a look at it and tell me whether or not this is permissible. We've got a lot of material we're covering this week, so I know it's a little bit of an information overload, overload, but next week is the exam, so make sure you're familiar with this material because there's a lot of important material in this chapter. We're going to go in and grab a bite to eat, and uh, we'll continue this discussion inside.